Now for the show that's truly too hot to handle. It's the Melting Pack, and it starts right now. You're listening to the Melting Pack. Here's your host, Pat Johnson. Thank you, Jerome. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the show, The Melting Pat, Next Level Network. How are you? I am frazzled, razzled, dazzled, and exhausted, but I'm okay. Work's been nuts. The kid uh, this kid doesn't sleep. And um, actually, no, that's all. That's all. The cough is still hanging around, but we're all getting better. We all feel okay for now, and uh, hopefully that does not change. Hopefully uh, we're good going forward because we got things going on. So there we go. Cross your... Fingers and toes, I won't ask for prayers because I don't pray really, but cross your fingers and toes for me and uh, for all of us that we're all going to be good when we have things to do, okay? Thanks. Appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> how we doing? We are, we are right. You can hear him screaming probably up there. It's a happy scream, I think. I don't know. Anyway, we have a lot to do today. We might come back on Friday to do some baseball stuff. We might not. It depends. Like... Sometimes I'm super busy and I don't have time to do the show until Thursday. And other times I can squeeze it in here and there in pieces, which is what I'm going to have to do now. Um, so we'll see. But I, I will do a, as we sit here, I'll do a here's where we are with the baseball. And then if I can come back on Friday, I will. If not, then we'll just end the show after that. But in between the song, which is brand new from our friends, Shallow Pools, they have an album. Their debut album is out now. So get it now. We'll talk about it in a second. But just so you know, off the top, that's what's going on with the song. And then in between, we got some loose ends to tie off. Um, MAG with his Matrix reasoning, why he didn't like it, why he thought the trailer was better than the movie. We have a TV TV theme. I'm talking too fast. Um, That's what Rabbi always said, man. Slow down. Slow down. Rabbi, I miss that guy so much. He was my boss when I interned for radio station. And I sent him some demos in college. And after that... And he said, hey, you are you sound good. Just slow down. And I, I always, I try to remember that every so often, but then I, I get rolling and I just kind of, it all flies out. So I will, uh, let's take a, let's take a beat and slow it down for Rabbi. I miss that guy. He was great. Um, Sorry, we have a TV theme. There we go for Doug. So we'll do that. My bad. I, it's funny. I, I brought it over. Like I, I, uh, I got the theme out from the thing. Like I clipped it ready to go. And then didn't copy that one over to the notes before the show. So my bad. So we got some loose ends. We'll do that. Uh, I just explained everything, so I don't really have to later. I don't know why I'm doing this now. But then we'll talk bag bingo. We'll talk the zoo. Uh, And somebody asked me, hey, Pat, tell us how you think something works about why streaming TV services have a delay over cable. So we'll do that. And then we did get another question, but I'm going to save it till next week. But I will let you know what it is when we get there. All right? All right. Jeez. So that's what's going on with the show. Those are all the things that are coming up for you today. Again, hope you're well. Hope you're warm, dry, wet, cool, however you uh, are most comfortable. I hope that is how you feel today. All right. I'm uh, I'm all out of sorts, as you can tell. So there we go. But we have a song to play from our dear friends, Shallow Pools. And I, I have been kind of waiting to try to get them on the show. And then I realized... I don't know, I don't have a clue when that can happen. And so I figured I might as well promote them, promote their new album, play the song, because it's great. A song, any song, is great by them. So I figure I'll play the song on the show, promote them, and then when they come back on the show, we'll pick another one, and it'll be fine. More shallow pools is never a bad thing. So we'll do that. So uh, ladies, ladies, I don't know what pronouns are, but uh, I'm a, you know, cis white guy, I'm trying. Uh, so whenever you want to come back on the show, you're more than welcome. And by the way, the album is called I Think About It All the Time, their debut. It is out now. We last had them on the show when their debut EP came out, spring in 2018 or 19, whenever that was. And then now they have a debut album, so I think we should have them back. Right? Yes, they have a new member. Now they're saying bad words. This song's not safe for work. Fun fact, they wouldn't curse on my show when they were here. And now all of a sudden... They're not safe for working it all over the place. The world has changed, and honestly, I don't blame what they're doing. I love it, too. It's great. Why am I telling you all this? I'm not really sure. 
I don't really know, but I love Shallow Pools. They're fantastic. Shallowpools.com for more from them. Again, their new album, I Think About It All the Time. It is out now. Go get it. Tell them I sent you and enjoy this. It's now or never. It's not safe for work, by the way. Now you know. It's the Melting Pat. We're coming right back. Running out of time, feel it every night I'm not with You've been feeling terrified, see it in your eyes Comes as no surprise, it's not then Ooh, I could tell you what you wanna hear Maybe I could tell you the truth Cause everything's fucked up Now now There you have it, our friends. Shallow Pools, their latest, now or never, from their new album, their debut album. I think about it all the time. Shallowpools.com for more. From them, the Melting Pat, we are back. I think we actually got the whole thing. I think we really... Uh, we really nailed the whole thing there. It was a little high for me, so I kind of had to bring it down a little bit. Again, I've said it, everybody, uh, lower, do your solos in a lower key. For me, just specifically for me, I know it won't fit your song, I'm aware, but it's fine. Anyway, I think about it all the time. It's the album, it is out now, their debut, shallowpools.com, for more from them. Again, I love that band, they are fantastic. I loved having them on the show, I'd love to have them back. They are the best. Go. I, I am very excited. Oh, I'm sorry. They appear courtesy of Equal Vision Records. So go check them out as well. Go check the label out as well. I believe our friends Sharia Moore are on that label. And they, uh, is it this week or next week they're putting out a record? I think it's next week. Um, anyway, check out everybody. Tell them I sent you. And uh, I don't know. Go enjoy some new tunes. All right? All right. Nothing but the best for our friends at Shallow Pools. They are amazing, and uh, I'm excited for how uh, for how much fun, how much good stuff is going to come their way. So there you go. With that, all the things we handle it. All right. So before we dive into the rest of the show here, we got some odds and ends that we have to tie off from the last couple of weeks. So a couple of weeks ago, we did our um, one of our questions was which movie trailer was better than the movie. I think Jen suggested that one. Thank you. And uh, I asked several of you, or all of you, really, if you could give me a reason to why you chose the movie you chose. And MAG said uh, he picked The Matrix for his. The trailer was better than the movie. And uh, I got to say, first of all, uh, MAG, thank you. Second of all, I know you listen to the show, so what the hell are you doing writing a novel for me to read? It's going to be tough. It's going to be fine at the end once we get there. But damn you, sir. Damn you. I'm joking, of course. Well, where am I? Maybe not. We're going to find out together if I'm kidding or not. Uh, all right. So <laughs> I had asked when he saw The Matrix, like maybe if he saw it right away or later or whatever. Um, he said, I saw it the year it was released, 1999. The trailers made it look so mysterious and cool, and it would only show the action scenes while merely posing the question, what is The Matrix? Well, 
With buildup like that, I have to know what the Matrix is. I had to wait to rent it about five months, uh, five or so months later, which only amplified my anticipation. Sure enough, the action and effects were cool, but holy crap, I just didn't care about anything. Finding out what the Matrix is was a letdown. The characters aren't interesting. It's ugly and dull to look at, and it's so pretentious. God damn, dude. <laughs> I love this. I know many people make a big deal about the philosophical aspect of the movie, but it's basically Jesus Christ in a trench coat with a sci-fi scenario and thinks it's deeper than it really is. I hated it ever since I saw it, and unlike other movies I didn't like or were just terrible movies, I've never seen it again. Yes, it's one of the rare movies I've seen where one viewing was enough and I never bothered with the sequels. It was extra rough for me as I lived with a friend who thought the franchise was just the bee's knees. That means his friend thought it was really good, by the way. Uh, not to mention it opening the doors to all this talk nowadays from people who want to escape the Matrix because they think their lives suck. So yeah, there we go. I credit this movie for causing me to be extra suspicious of movie trailers, especially ones that don't give details about the plot. I'm sure I've made people angry, but that's the price I have to pay. So there you go. A scathing review of The Matrix from MAG, who I would think at the time, I think we're about the same age. So you would have been 11 or 12 at the uh, then, 10 or 11, 12, something like that. And so to have, like, I thought The Matrix was cool as hell. I enjoyed it. I don't remember, uh, honestly, I don't remember thinking too much about it at, like on, on a philosophical level like a lot of people apparently did. Uh, apparently my contemporaries did as well. I don't know. Who knew? I didn't. I thought it looked cool. I thought, um, you know, it was something I'd never really seen before. But also, I understand the criticism. Like, I get it. Like, I watched the trailer. I watched all these trailers when I did the themes. And I get it. I, I understand the criticism. And I love how deep you went. I know you made me read a lot, and that's fine. But it's not fine. But we made it. And... <laughs> And I love how much you, like, I, I feel like you have just been holding that in since 1999, and you were waiting for someone to really ask you about it so you could just go, oh, well, crack your knuckles and just start typing away. I imagine you did this on a typewriter somehow and then posted it to the internet. I don't know how that would work, but I imagine that's what you did. You cracked your fingers, you did it by candlelight on a typewriter, and then somehow, you know, carry your pinched it to the internet. So I could see it and read it. And uh, I really, I like that, man. Again, and I like the movie. Like, you, you're allowed to hate things I like. It's fine. Um, you know, people hate the Bourne movies, and that's one of my favorite movie series that I've seen. I love those movies. So I get it. I understand where you're coming from uh, being disappointed, and I do appreciate the input. Thanks, man. Uh, all right. So we have one more thing, one more uh, odd and end to uh, tie off here from a week ago. Uh, I, I pulled this out. It's, it's funny. I... So I was making my list on uh, Monday last week, TV themes. Thank you, Lockjaw, for the suggestion. And I pulled this one. I, I had them all down. I went on all my social apps and checked all the notifications. And I saw that Doug suggested Portlandia. Doug's been on the show. ABT Silence on Twitch. Go give him a follow. Tell him I sent you. Um, and so Doug suggested Portlandia. I pulled it out. I forgot to put it on the show last week. So we'll wrap with that. Thank you, Doug. My apologies. Uh, there you go. I've seen a bunch of, not all of the episodes of Portlandia. Jill watched all of it, and I saw a few with her. I thought it was pretty good. It was. It's a. It's a weird show. Not gonna lie. It's good. The theme is good. It. it the theme, like, it kind of it fits, right? Sometimes a the theme is like, whoa, what's this doing here? Uh, but most of the time, you know, the the music people get it right, and I feel like the uh, that Portlandia theme fits the the uh, the tone of the show pretty well. So there you go. Sorry, Doug, a week late, might be, but you'll listen and you'll be like, yeah, no, it's cool, man. No worries. And he'll say something like that. And he might say exactly that. In fact, when he, uh, when he sends me a message on like Tuesday. So, th <laughs> so there you go. Odds and ends tied off from last week. Sorry, everybody. I, I do my best around here, but it, sometimes I just miss stuff because things go wacky. All right. All right. So let's talk bag bingo. Let's do that. 
So we've done this for not we like I'm I'm marginally involved, but um, marginally involved. There we go. Pat, say the full word. Otherwise, it sounds like you're saying something totally different. So my mom and my smoking hot wife are in a charity organization, the Catholic Daughters of the Americas, and they do numerous events throughout the year to raise money. They raise all this money and then they give it away to organizations. That's the point. It's a charity. That's the idea. So for several years, I think five or six years, they have done a bag bingo. And if you don't know what a bag bingo is, the organization will buy the bags or they have, they'll be donated by local businesses that have businesses, a bunch of businesses, a bunch of purses, Michael Kors, Vera Bradley, uh, Kate Spade, Coach, am I missing one? I don't know, maybe. Um, so they'll buy these and then you know, people will show up and they, they'll they bring their snacks and their drinkies and their friends and you play games of bingo all night and the winners get the bags. And then there are raffles and 50-50 and all these other things. It's a, it's a really, it's a fun time. Uh, people really seem to enjoy it and get into it. So that's always good. And so my role has been to walk around during the games. So they announce at the beginning. So my uh, Jill calls the games. And so she announces, hey, this you know, game number one is uh, for this bag donated by whoever, and it's a regular bingo or a whatever, X or cross, whatever. So uh, she'll explain that, and then I will walk around the room and show off the bag. And they decided that, hey, like people want to see what they're playing for. And so somehow I got roped into doing it. Um, it's fun. It's, it's always fun. Like it's always a good time because a lot of times I get to see people I haven't seen in a while. And that's always great. And then I just get to wander around and kind of laugh and joke with people. And sometimes people get a little uppity and, uh, and that sucks. And, uh, I got to kind of police where people don't touch the bags. And that also sucks because these are adults who, uh, don't know how to look with their eyes. And that's always, it's just weird. Like, Hey, please don't touch the bags. And they're like, Oh, really? Yes. Really? Why am I standing here? If you're, if you're allowed to just touch the bags, the f*** is wrong with you? So (laughs) It's not that it's not that big of a deal, but it, it I mean it's a deal. So yeah, I get to walk around and uh, and carry the bags, and everybody seems to enjoy what's going on, and they like to look at it, and they ask me if there's a strap, and I'm like, hell if I know. And um, yeah, it's it's always good, and they they raise some money. I I think they do anyway, and uh, people always seem to have a good time. So that was our bag bingo experience. I think uh, I, I don't know. I was going to say something else, and the thought's gone. All right. Oh, well, um, it was good. It's always good. And um, it's always interesting how many people gravitate toward a certain bag. Like there's always one or two where like 90% of the people coming up to look at them are like, I want to win that one or I want this one. And then as I'm walking around with other bags, they're like, no, I don't like that one. No, I don't like that one. Oh, that's the one I want to win. They're like, oh, hey, I want you to drop that off right here. One, one lady was funny. She was like, hey, that's the first one that doesn't match your outfit. Why don't you leave that here with me? And I, mean, I thought that was fun. Like, it's just, it's just fun. It's fun. And um, we all have a good time, and everybody seems to enjoy themselves. And uh, congratulations to all the winners. So there you go. Um, anything else about the bag bingo I was supposed to tell you? I don't think so. It's fun. Now I've explained the bag bingo. I think I've explained that bag bingo five times on this show. But we always have new people coming in and out. So it's always good to explain things. And uh, so you understand where I'm coming from. But yeah, not every, sometimes people get a little snippy, and that's uh, that's upsetting. But um, I deal with snippy people all the time with work, and I have with several of my jobs. So I get it. I get it. It's all good. And uh, I also was in charge of keeping track of the Phillies game, which I did during the uh, during the thing. So a uh, good time all around. There we go. <laughs> I thought I had. I thought I was going to come back to that thought that I lost, and I did not. So there we go. That was Saturday. Then Monday, I had the day off. And uh, Jill's been talking about for months, let's take the kid to the zoo for the first time. We want to go to the zoo together as a family. And because uh, she, she took him to the aquarium and I didn't get to go because work and stuff. And so I had a holiday and she's like, yep, let's go to the zoo. And it turned out that uh, weather wise, it was absolutely perfect to go to the zoo. It was like 63 degrees, cloudy. It was amazing. Like it was an incredible day to go to the zoo which uh, explains the damn crowd. And, uh, well, first, let me, you know what? Let me get the negative out of the way first. I've said this before, but God damn it, people. Please be aware that others have to go into the space you're occupying. Like, 
everyone has to go and move in different directions. And so you can't just stop in the way and expect other people to accommodate you. Like, just look around and be like, oh, is this a good place to stop and open the map or look at my phone or, you know, check and see if I have snacks or check and see where we're going next? No, it's in the middle of the walkway, so maybe I should move over. And it's just like, I... Especially when, like, again, when you have a stroller and, like, people are just, hey, I don't need to move out of your way. You can move out of my way. Like, no, you're a regular person on two, your two feet and we are two people, two adults pushing a kid in a big stroller. So let's do the math here and realize you got to move your ass. That That's all. And, and then people who have bigger strollers don't, I guess, don't realize that the strollers are massive and they stop in the middle of walkways and turn sideways and block the whole damn thing and then get mad when you're like, hey, excuse me, I got to go this way too, you goddamn idiot. And um, yeah, oh, also, uh, everybody, just a, just another public service announcement from old Pat here. If your kid is not feeling well, they're sniffling, coughing, sneezing, anything of the sort, stay home. Stay home. Why have we not learned? It's been three and a half goddamn years with the pandemic things and all that. And, you know, we're all more aware of disease and carrying things. But no, since since uh, nobody told you that you have to wear a mask anymore or whatever, you decide, hey, we're just going to go and cough and sneeze all over everything and everybody else too bad. Like, honestly, if your kid is not feeling well, cancel the trip to the zoo. Sometimes you got to miss out on stuff. It happens. It's part of the deal. And it, you bringing your sick kid somewhere is not going to make it good for them or anybody else. All right, so there's the negative. Let's get that out of the way. I, I figured it's better to end on the happier side of things, which is, first of all, the kid was super, like, he did a super job, like, listening and, and making his way. All things considered, it's an overwhelming environment. He's never been there before. There's a lot going on. Um, he only had one little freak out, which was, uh, you know, to be expected, first of all, and uh, not as many as we thought were going to be. So we handled that, and uh, I think we did okay. But he did really well for his first trip there, and he loved it. He absolutely loved it. He's why well, there's so many things to see and do and, and check out. And we pet some goats and uh, he's familiar with goats, as you recall. And uh, at first he was really excited about leaves and birds that were not part of the zoo and rocks and climbing the stairs. Uh, all things we can do here, of course. But <laughs> then he's like, oh, my God, like he has magnets and he has magnet tiles and little puzzle pieces of all these animals. And so we're like, hey, man. There's a zebra. And he goes, zebra! And he freaks out. And there's, oh, there's a giraffe. Rawr! It was great. And then uh, we saw some monkeys. We saw some... There was another thing that he really got excited. Oh, penguins and ducks. And so, like, he was just super excited. He loved every bit of it. And then just running around, man. Just a big open space to run around. And, uh, you know, talking to other kids. And trying to share his cookies. And we watched the tiger take a nap. And that was awesome. And then... You know, that was it. We didn't get to do everything, obviously, because it's, you know, you just get to the end of your rope with um, everything, you know, and the kid was starting to get uh, get a little tired. So we get in the car and he goes right to sleep and then we were good. Everything was all right. So we had a very good first trip at the zoo as a whole family. It was great. Um, he did not sit still for any real pictures. So we, we took a couple uh, but he didn't really sit still. He was there was again a lot going on. If you've ever been to a zoo, any zoo um, with a two year old, then you know there's a lot to to see and do and touch and look at and all this stuff. And um, only one real freak out because uh, I don't remember why, but it ended up being fine. And uh, we all had a great day. We all had a really good day. So yeah, we got lucky. The weather was perfect for the zoo. And um, yeah, the only real. Negatives were other adults not understanding the space. So that kind of sucked, but everything else was great. So uh, we call it a win. We had a good time. Very glad we got to do it. Very fortunate we got to handle that. And uh, we actually, there was nothing else to that story. Um, I was trying to decide if I had to take a break to handle a thing. And yes, I do. So we will talk about some more things that we have. I know this is really awkward. I'm sorry. I'm doing my best. Like I said, I do these on breaks at work, and now I got to go back. So uh, that was a zoo. It was really fun. The kid loved it. I would say can't wait to go back, but then I remembered all the dumbass adults, so maybe I can. But 
We're going <laughs> to... Quick break, then we'll come back and do a couple more things. All right, sit tight. Okay, we are back. I think. I hope. I don't know. Anyway, we only have a couple more things to do. Well, uh, yeah, two more things to do, and one of them will be uh, fairly quick because it's the baseball and it's Wednesday, and there's not much to report because a lot of things are still going on and will be done probably by the time this comes out. So anyway, let's do this first. We got a question to the website from, oh, we got a name on this one. How about that? Yeah, Lisa says, no, Linda, I'm sorry. Lisa, Linda, Lydia, whoever you are, I'm sorry I don't read, I can't read your name. But <laughs> but thank you for the question. Again, the best way to get in touch with me is by the contact page at themeltingpat.com because I get notified twice and apparently I still won't be able to read your goddamn name. <laughs> so I'm sorry. It's it's Linda. My bad. She, Linda says... <laughs> Hey, Pat, I think this could be a fun segment. Can you tell us how you think something works? And I asked for, I actually, um, I was going to ask for an example. Then I scrolled down and saw that she provided one. Like, hey, why do you think streaming TV has a delay over cable? And actually, thank you for the question. I can answer this for real. So, I mean, I could probably make something up. But I worked in radio for a bit and I was an intern, but still. I worked in the programming department, and one of the questions that I actually asked was, hey, why is there a delay from like the radio in, in my car to the stream, the feed, on my computer? And it was explained to me that the signal goes out once. So the signal goes out from the station, and I'm, I'm just going to assume this works for TV, so I don't have to explain it again. So the signal comes from the station, TV or radio. Signal comes out in whatever format it is. So it goes out one time over the air. And so if you have an antenna, well, in your radio, in your car, and you have an antenna for a digital antenna for your TV, you can get the over the air channels, right? 369, 3610, 2957 hike, right? So you have that and you you get that first feed, right? So the streaming services of the streaming, uh, the player for the radio or like the Hulu, um, Sling, I almost said PS View, that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, YouTube TV, PS View was great, by the way. I enjoyed that, their streaming TV service a lot, but uh, they shut down when Sling kind of took hold. So anyway, RIP PS View. Um, <laughs> I used it for a week. Anyway, so all the streaming live TV services, Hulu, Sling, whoever, are not making, like they're not getting a new feed of the show, of whatever's being sent over the air, right? They're not get, they're not getting a new feed of all these programs. They're just taking the first feed and relaying it again on their own servers. And so the feed goes out to wherever, to over the air. And so you get that. There's always a delay from, you know, the voice to, let's bring it back to radio because that's what I know, from the voice to the car. Right. There's always a delay from the studio because it has to relay through the signal has to it takes time to go over the air. So you have six, seven, eight seconds. Uh, when I was there, I learned about the dump button, which is the program director and a couple of other high ranking people had a, a button in their office where if they could they could press that when something on the air on the show, whatever the morning show or wherever was about to cross the line or was, yeah, was going to get them in some kind of trouble. Has how it was explained to me, where they could press that, and then you'd hear silence on the radio for four seconds. And so then they could go. And I remember I was sitting in the uh, program, uh, one of the program directors off, uh, in Rabbi's office, and I hear a bit of a, like, I hear just like silence. And Rabbi goes, uh-oh. And I'm like, what happened? And so then I look, and the program director's office was down the hall. And so he would have to pass us to go, like, pass the door to go to the studio where the morning show was. And so I just see him walking briskly by. And then I hear, you know, he goes into the studio and says, "Uh, hey guys. And then I hear him and they go through the whole thing. And I'm like, what was, so that, that ended like the whole, their little um, snafu or whatever ended. And I said, Rabbi, what was that? Like what happened? And he said, yeah, we got a dump button. I got one right here where if something, if, if one of us hears something on a show or on, on the air, that is, that's going to be not great then we can dump it and then 
silence goes out over the air, and then someone lets them know in the studio, hey, we dumped it, change topics, pivot, right? Go to something else, because you're about to get into uh, some murky territory. So that was a fun thing. And so there's always a delay. Anyway, I wanted to tell that story because it was fun. So anyway, um, there's always the delay from the person saying it to you hearing it. It's probably five, six seconds, right? When I was at WDSR in college, it was like 20 seconds because internet and slow connections and whatnot. I think when I was on Party 93.4, it was eight seconds. Does that sound right? Something like that. But generally, it's you know four to six seconds of a delay or six or eight seconds or whatever from the radio. And so then what happens is the delay that comes with the streaming is because they're not getting their own feed. Like they're not making a new feed of the show, TV, radio, whatever. They're just taking the feed that's already there and then relaying it somewhere else. And so it's like trying to think of the best way to explain this, uh, if I can try to help you visualize it. But it's like you take it and you're taking the same thing. You're just sending it through another channel. And so you have the radio, like the regular feed, that goes right to the TV, right to the antenna. So that's one-to-one. And so then you now have to go take an extra step to get to, like, from the station, through the relay, through the sling, YouTube, whatever, and then it goes to your thing, to your TV. And so the reason why streaming TV is behind is because they're taking the same feed that's already there, they're just running it through another relay, And that's what's taking the time. Like, that's the delay is that they're taking the same feed that's already on the air and running it through their service. And so that takes an extra, I don't know, six, seven, eight seconds. So instead of a, you know, five or six second delay, you have an 11 or 12 second delay or 13 or whatever it is, right? I've never sat down with someone and said, hey, what are you seeing right now versus what I'm seeing? But um, yeah, that's why it happens. And that's an actual answer. Because that's what happens with radio. Uh, Because again, from the station to the antenna, that's a one-to-one. And then the streaming picks it up and takes it through another channel. And so there's a delay there because it has to pass through another relay before it gets out over the air. So that's why you have the delay. There you go. Did we learn anything there? That was a long explanation, I'm aware. But I also included a story that I thought was fun. But yeah, I know you tried to trip me up. And I do. maybe I mentioned that I could try that several weeks ago. Like try to just explain something that happens in the world and try to just make something up or just like, I don't know, w- with my worldview, just try to explain how things work. Maybe I did mention that. I feel like that wouldn't be unprompted. Maybe I did. I don't remember. I don't, Lisa, Linda, Lydia, uh, I don't know if they wrote that down. I just <laughs> got to the end of the question and then I copied it and, and wrote it down here. So there we go. So thank you. Uh, whoever you, whatever your name is, I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) But anyway, yeah, the best way to get in touch with me, the contact page at themeltingpat.com. And yes, that is how, um, that's how it works for radio because the the streamer has to take the same feed and run it through their service. And so that's why you get the delay from the radio versus the online. And I assume I'm pretty sure that's how it works for TV as well. I can't imagine it's much different because it's the same principle, right? The TV station has their their programming. It pings out over the air, goes to the antennas, and then the services aren't making a new thing. Because if they did, you wouldn't have the extra delay because then you would just have the same feed from the station with the standard four, five, six second delay instead of 10 or 12. Um, if they were making their own, but they're not because that wouldn't make sense for the TV station because then they'd have to pay for another thing to go out. And then that would really, that would complicate things with the streamers and all that. So I, I would guess what the streamers do is just take that same feed, run it through their thing, uh, through their relay, through their server. And that's how you get, number one, that's how you get their, um, that's how streaming TV exists. And number two, that's why it takes an extra four, five, six seconds. So there you go. That is, should we get a theme for that? Pat explains how things work. Does that work? 
I'm going to forget that by next week or by whenever the next time we get another question like that. Um, <laughs> but there you go. Pat explains how things work. Um, I'm happy to do that again. Happy to happy to take a, take a meandering walk down. Uh, I don't know what happened there, but if you want to know how my brain figures things out in real time, you ask me questions like that. How how I think things work. As long as it's not like, you know, foreign policy or or some geopolitical something or other. I generally want to stay away from those because I'm really not uh, informed enough to make a good segment out of that. Plus, like that, that'd just be a whole mess. And like I said a couple weeks ago, I'd rather avoid those if I can. So um, anything fun you'd like me to take a stab at how it works, like space travel or something, <laughs> let me know. All right? All right. Um, oh, boy. Uh, we did get another question, but what I think I'll do is I'm going to save that for next week or the week after, and maybe I'll pose that to you, because somebody asked me if I could rank the fast food burgers, which is funny, because I had a, an idea for a website thing, about, for a, a post on the website about this, and never got to it. Like years ago, I thought about this, and never got to it. Uh, so maybe we'll make that a question for you in the next couple of weeks, ranking the fast food burgers. So I guess they would mean Big Mac, Whopper, Maybe Baconator from Wendy's or the Dave's single or double um, and checkers, I would think. I'm trying to think of burger places that are everywhere, like Five Guys. Are, well, Five Guys, I guess, but like Five Guys is just legit a cheeseburger, like a double cheeseburger, right? So maybe we don't include that one. And like Hardee's, their burgers are great. I don't know what their main thing is, but they're also not everywhere. I think checkers is is pretty widespread. If, if I'm wrong, if that's more localized, somebody let me know. Like, I don't have a jack-in-the-box around here or an in-and-out or anything like that. But, um, I don't know. Let me know. Maybe I'm missing a, a burger joint, like a, a massive nationwide burger joint that everybody could weigh in on. Uh, somebody Because I'm not doing, like, regional, and I'm not doing, like, your local place. Because that's not fair, because not everybody would have the option to taste that and test our theories, right? So, uh, in a couple weeks, we'll do... Ranking the fat. Well, maybe we'll make that a question. Ranking the fast food burgers, and uh, and we'll try that. So thank you for the question on that one. Thank you for the question on the uh, making something up, how it works, and uh, for all the things. All right, all right. We're good. We're good. Right, almost. All right. Real quick with the sports, I may come back on uh, on Friday if I have time to record, and we'll see if these series is is have ended or uh, maybe we're we got a bunch of game fives on Saturday. I don't know. Isn't that nice that all the teams wrapped up their series is, is just in time for me to record and give you again an updated, uh, I'll be able to preview the next round. There we go. I don't know what happened there. It's, uh, it's early. Well, it's not that early, but I'm tired. So in the American League, we have the battle for Texas, the Rangers, and the Astros. The Astros slugged the crap out of the Twins. That sounds violent, um, but <laughs> And the Rangers are undefeated in the postseason. Elsewhere in the, uh, well, in the National, I almost said elsewhere in the American League, but no, we're down to two in the American League and two in the National League. And the Diamondbacks are also undefeated in the postseason, dispatching of the Brewers and the Dodgers, respectively. But the Diamondbacks are so much fun. And uh, I am actually a little nervous because your Philadelphia Phillies knocked out the Braves again, second year in a row. Very exciting. Um, Heart pounding, crazy game last night or on uh, Thursday rather, and uh, they did it. They did it. They are back. Four wins from reaching the World Series. Eight more topper, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for both these series actually because the Rangers are a very good team. They have been. They spend a lot of money to get to this spot where they are. And the Astros, you can. I mean, you know, say what you want about them. I've said enough, but. You can't discount the uh, the postseason experience. I know nerds don't like it because you can't put a number behind it, but um, it's very important to have people who who know how to play these games in October because it's a completely different feel, as we see. Like all the teams that won 100 plus games have been eliminated from the playoffs. So the regular season they won 100 games or more, and none of them made the league championship series. So that's crazy. I think this is the fewest. What did I read the other day? The fewest wins total in any league championship series ever. And that the league championship series, I think started in 1969, if I'm not mistaken on that one. 
But anyway, yes, have all your complaints about the playoff format and teams having off and that ruins their flow and all these other things. I'm not going to focus on that because I'm not a whiny baby. Uh, no, that's mean, Pat. You're just saying that because your team did make it. Yeah, probably. But also, if you're a good enough team, you would win those games. That's all. So let's focus on the teams that are there. We have the Astros, who are perennial contenders and cheaters, probably. Uh, the, <laughs> I said I wasn't going to do it anymore. You're right. You're right. The Rangers, who finally decided we were going to go all in beginning of the year. Uh, you know, they have some injuries, but they still made it. They're now in the LCS, which is exciting for them. First time for them since 2011. Right. Yeah, they made the World Series, lost to the Cardinals in seven games. That was a great series, by the way. And the Astros trying to repeat for the first time since the 98-99 Yankees. So there you go. Two hated teams. I don't know. Anyway, no, we weren't going to, we're not going to go there. And the Phillies back in first times again. They're repeat, they're repeating in the NLCS as I'm repeating the beginnings of words as they knock out the Braves in four games again to make it through. And the Diamondbacks are in the LCS for the first time since 2007. Right? Yeah, then they lost to the Rockies, who then lost to the Red Sox in the World Series. So there you go. You're caught up on the history of the teams in the LCS. Does that is that interesting for anybody? No? Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I think both these series will be great. Uh, obviously, I have a, having a vested interest helps. So I'll, I'll be uh, more tuned in to one than the other. But I do think uh, these are going to be some great games. And either way, we're going to have a fun World Series at the, at the end of these... Uh, Four, no, eight, 10, 12, 14 games, however long it takes. So very excited. Um, whine about the format somewhere else. I'm just going to be excited for the teams that did make it and the exciting games we're going to have over the next few weeks slash month. So looking forward to all of that. Go Phils, go whoever you like, unless you like the Diamondbacks or uh, the Astros, I guess. Does that mean? No, they cheated. That's It's fine. Um Go Phillies. There you go. So, yes, very exciting. For the second year in a row, the Phillies will play for a shot at the World Series. Looking forward to it very much. It will take some years off my life. It's very stressful. You know, the Phillies weren't in the playoffs for a long time, and uh, I forgot how stressful the playoffs can be. And now they're back a second year in a row, and I don't know, man. I don't know if I can handle it. No, it'll be fine. It's going to be great. Or, you know, even if they lose, it'll be fine. Like, grand scheme, it'll be fine. I'll be disappointed, obviously. But, uh... Grand scheme, it'll be fine. I'm not going to break my TV. I'm not going to beat the crap out of someone. I'm not going to throw things because uh, I'm a 35-year-old man, and I don't do that. So there you go. 20-year-old me, maybe. But uh, I'm 35 now, and I have, a, I have a child. So we can't do that. I can't be on TikTok breaking my TV, getting famous. Or could I? Or could I? Jill, I'm breaking the TV. Going on TikTok. Uh, <laughs> no, what we're doing is we're done. Go. There you go. We have the, the matchups. They're set. They begin on Sunday, the ALCS on Sunday, Astros, Rangers, and the NLCS, Phillies, Diamondbacks on Monday. So there you go with that. We are down to four. Go, Phillies. Go. I love baseball. And I love when my team could win the World Series. That'd be great. They have a chance. Eight more wins. So we shall see what happens. We'll cross our fingers and toes, and hopefully the good guys will win. Is that... Did we do? Is that a good way to end? That's not. That does. That means the Diamondbacks are the bad guys, and that's not true. They're really fun. All right. Anyway, go Phillies. That's it. We're, we did the baseball. Let's shoehorn this in. And awkwardly, here's a sound. Let's get us back to whatever I said next. All right. Oh, I didn't talk to the captain. So if we hear from the captain, uh, or no, the season just started, so he's got nothing to go on yet. I don't think the Flyers have even played by the time we're talking now. So I will text the captain. And we'll probably get on that for next week for the first Flyers update of the season. And NFL Week 6, I have no idea who's playing. Oh, man. All right. Fun fact. You might not know this. Maybe I've said this. But I almost uh, stopped doing the Game of the Week for the show because I kind of, I'm kind of out on the NFL a little bit. Like, not completely. I still pay attention, but um, not as much as I used to. But then everyone seems to really like picking these games, and they like to win things. And so I keep doing it. So, um I don't know. I guess when everybody gets bored, I'll stop doing it, but uh, I'm kind of bored. Does that make any sense? Is that helpful? No? All right. We're going to go. That's all. We're going to get out of here. I got things to finish up here, and we are all done with the show. My thanks to you for listening. My thanks to Shallow Pools. Congratulations on the release. I think about it all the time. Is the album shallowpools.com for more from them. Go get it. Tell them I sent you, and they will probably remember who I am. 
That'd be great. Come back to the show. Come back right now. And a lot of our friends this month are releasing music, so go check them out. I'll try to shout them out as they come. Um, but we highlight one on the show because that's what we do. All right? We're good. Thanks for all the questions, everybody. Uh, next week, we'll do fast food burgers. Hopefully, that explanation of why streaming TV has a delay. Maybe that uh, was interesting for you. Maybe it didn't make any sense. I won't find out till tomorrow. So hopefully it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be great. Um, yeah, send your questions to MeltingPat.com. The contact page is the absolute best way to get a hold of me. And uh, you can also leave a voicemail, 209-867-7638. Send a text to that number as well. And uh, let me know your thoughts on all kinds of things. All right, questions, comments, com- blah, blah, corrections. There are many observations. You know the drill. We're good to go. All right. All right. You got it all. You got it all. We're good. We're good. G Love and Special Sauce, they'll play us out. Philadelphonic.com for more from them. We'll hear a cold beverage and, uh, and that'll be it. All right. <laughs> oh boy. This has been an eight boiling production. So until next time, my friends, have fun. Be safe. Thank a veteran. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Get vaccinated and boosted when you can. And of course, don't do anything I wouldn't do. That's all right. Yes, thank you so much. Have a great day. Have a great week. Talk to you next time. Till then, you know the drill. All right? You've been inside the mouth of Pat on the next level network. Go crap open a cold one. (laughs) 